previous uh, video of mine show you how to do a chi-square goodness of fit test with a TI Inspire calculator. Now you'll have a couple of minutes to watch me set up this problem and explain you know that we can actually do it, what are the checks, and we'll come back to the calculator here and see how to type it in and actually get that test done as efficiently as I know how. Here's our example we're going to take a look at in this video. Is there a relationship between the day of the week and the number of ER visits to the hospital? Now, I, because of uh, space was limited, you know, this would go on and talk about how data was collected over a few months' time, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But uh, H sub O is the ER visits are equally likely each day of the week. My problem doesn't say anything about, you know, it doesn't hypothesize or it's not a company claiming that, you know, or a hospital claiming you know, this is what percent of our ER visits are on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on. It just says, you know, is there a relationship? So we're going to assume that each day is equally likely. Remember, we set up H sub O as either there's no association, so it'd be like uh, no association between the day of the week and whether or not somebody comes into an ER uh, for a visit, or it's, you know, that your observed population distribution or sampling distribution you know, fits well into the hypothesized population distribution. And then H sub A is that the ER visits do differ from day to day, or that our observed distribution does not fit the hypothesized distribution. So over the three months of collecting data, we have these count values for uh, ER visits during the week, so Sunday, Monday, you know, Sunday through Saturday, and we have the counts of 823, 768, 747, 729, 794, 837, and 877. Now, we would call this a one-way table. There's only one row of data, and we're looking at the number of ER visits per day of the week. Because we only have a one row, uh, one row of data, this is a one-way table, older graphing calculators do not work with these easily, so we will do this work, you know, kind of by hand with an aid of a calculator as opposed to just see what the with a um, newer TID, uh, TID4 with the new software or the TI Inspire, they'll do this process a bit more automatically. Uh, you will still have to find your own observed values, or excuse me, expected values, but they will do them more automatically than say a TID1 or a TID3. Uh, so we're going to do this example as if you have an older calculator that will not do this test for you almost completely automatically. And uh, if you do have an Inspire, I'll be posting a video up about how to do this with that calculator. Now, as we look at these numbers, it does seem like, you know, there, are, there is a higher count for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But if I could just look at the numbers and go, yep, weekend days have more people going to the ER. You know, maybe uh, a game, sports game accidents, drinking-related uh, problems, uh, fell off a ladder when you're doing some house uh, repair. But if all I could do is just look at these numbers, I wouldn't need to be in a stats class, right? So let's start crunching some numbers. Now, if you take all those observed values that I just had on our problem, it came up to be uh, 5,574 observations, or ER visits. So we're going to take each of those count values and divide them by 5,574, to get a percentage of um, visits. So on Saturday we had 14.8% of all visits uh, to the ER. Monday represented 13.8% of all the visits. Tuesday 13.4, Wednesday 13.1, and so on. We're not going to use these percents in our calculation of chi-square, but we will refer to them back later when we do the conclusion statement if it is determined that there is a relationship between the day of the week and the frequency or the possibility of um, an increased possibility or change in the probability of someone going to the R or count value. We will use these, okay, I just said that. <laughs> okay, we're going to count the, we're going to calculate the expected cell counts for each of those cells in the table. If there is no association between the day and the number of ER visits, the probability for each day is one seventh or we should be seeing that 14.3% of all ER visits occur on every day of the week. So we're going to take the expected, uh, we're going to find these expected values by doing 1 7th or 0.143 and multiplying it by the number of total observations, which was again 5,574. 
This comes up to an expected cell count of 796.3. So the expected cell count for every one of the seven days of the week is that same value of 796.3. And thus, I've written it. Okay, so we have our observed count values. We have our expected count values. Let's actually run through the formula of calculating the uh, chi-square statistic and make sure that we do include the conditions check and draw a conclusion based on the observed p-value and the, you know, h sub o and h sub a. Next screen. Uh, get that goodness of fit test out of the way. Now it's a little bit more work to do this than just the uh, chi-square test for a two-way table. We got to get a list in there for observed and expected. So we're going to create a new document. We're going to add lists and spreadsheets. We're going to arrow up to the top of this column and let's do OBS for observed. So let's get that over there. And OBS for observed, arrow down. And we're going to enter the values of 823, 768, 746, uh, 729. 794, 837, and 877. We'll air over, go up to the top of the next column, and enter in, let's type in expected. Arrow down, and enter our expected values. Now, we were, you know, looking for uh, H of O was ER visits are equally likely during each day of the week. So remember, we had to take the total number of visits the ER observed and multiply that by one seventh, which was 14.3% or 0.143. And we got an expected value of 796.3. So we're going to do 796.3. And you can cut and copy or paste this or whatever. I'm just going to type this in. It's only a few numbers. And there we go. All right, so now we want to do, uh, you might be able to do this test in here, but I'm going to go ahead and add a page, uh, add a calculator, and we're going to hit menu, stats, or excuse me, escape that, statistics, stats test, and do a chi-square goodness of fit. So it opens up, it says, what's your observed list? Well, we named it observed, or close enough anyway. What's your expected list? Well, we named it expected. And you're having to do some manual calculations, so you'll have to tell that calculator what the degree of freedom is. We had seven cells in the table, and degree of freedom is k minus 1. So 7 minus 1 is equal to 6. And hit OK, and voila! Uh, the chi-square statistic is 21.03. The p-value is 0 0.0018, so there was strong evidence that... Uh, there was uh, a difference in the distribution of ER visits per each day of the week. We'll discuss that at the summary statement. And if you'd like to see the uh, computational list where you are working out the observed minus expected squared divided by the expected, if you'd like to see that for each of the seven cells in the table, we'll hit VARS, go to stat comp list, hit enter, and if you need those, you know, small individual values that help to add up to give us a chi-square statistic of 21.03, well, there you go. They're right there. So um, that's it. That's uh, how to do a chi-square goodness of fit test on a TI Inspire. Let's go back to the conclusion. Values. So our conclusion is going to be, with such a small p-value, there's very strong evidence for H sub A. That is, um, that means that there is a, uh, excuse me, that there is a relationship between the number of ER visits and the day of the week. Now notice I didn't describe what the relationship was. With chi-square, you're just looking for is there an association or not. Uh, H sub O is that there is not, H sub A is that there is a relationship. Or again, H sub O, does the observed population fit the hypothesized population distribution, or H sub A, does it not? It's not so, so, so specific. There's no such thing as an example as a, uh, a one-sided test where you look for the shading to the left, or a one-sided test where you shade to the right. 
It's just, is there an association or not? So it's kind of like, uh, relates to a two-sided test, a regular two-sided hypothesis test for a z-score or a t-score. Now, by the way, I forgot to include a drawing here, didn't I? All chi-square distributions are going to be what we would look at as being right, square, um, right skewed. So this chi-square statistic of 21 is out here somewhere, and our tail area is this very small area, again, between 0.025 and 0.001. So again, I'm talking about with such a small p-value, I'm using the actual size of the probability of observing this event, or one more extreme, and then relating it to the, the original H sub O and H sub A statement, and that we do have strong evidence for H sub A. All your summary statements after a significance test must use the value, your p-value, and then refer it to whether you have evidence for H sub A or you don't have evidence for H sub A, or you reject H sub O, or you fail to reject H sub O. Now, we did look at those percents, so I have one more sentence here. There's a higher proportion of visits on weekdays, and I, or weekend days, I'm labeling that as Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, observing percents in the range of around 15%, whereas the other days, Monday through Thursday, have uh, percent values, proportions of ER visits, somewhere between 13 and the low 14% range. So I'm using those observed proportions to then describe what relationship I see after I've determined with my very small p-value that there is evidence of that association. So again, you make those observed probabilities or those observed proportions, but they do not come into play until you can say that you have evidence for H sub A, that there is that association or that your observed distribution, your observed population does not fit the hypothesized distribution. Bye!